Hello and welcome to Music Made Simple. Lesson 10, The Movable Cliff. Recall that we are still discussing about representation of pitch of sounds on the staff. And also remember that in lesson seven, we learned about the two most common clefs that are used in music, the G and F clef, that give permanent names to the treble staff and the bass staff. In this lesson, we are going to learn about one other type of clef, that is the movable clef, which is used for a few instruments and some special choral groups. The treble and bass clefs are the two most commonly found in music. However, there is another clef called the C or movable clef. This clef is used by some musical instruments and in some special arrangements of choral music. The C or movable clef is written as shown. The line that passes through the middle of this clef is the almighty middle C. Again, that's the C midway on the piano keyboard as shown. Originally, there were five types of this clef in use, depending on what line it is placed. On whatever line it is placed, the line becomes middle C. We have the soprano clef, the mezzo-soprano clef, the alto clef, the tenor clef, and the baritone clef. By the way, the treble singers are usually classified in two groups. The sopranos, who have the higher voices and the mezzo-sopranos whose pitches are slightly lower than the sopranos. So both soprano and mezzo-soprano are treble singers. Also, you saw that we mentioned baritone clef. The basses are usually classified into two again. The baritone, whose voices are a little higher than the basses, and the basses, whose voices are much deeper than the baritone singers. Of these five clefs, only two remain in common use today. These are the alto clef and the tenor clef. The alto clef. When the clef is placed on the third line of the staff, the clef becomes the alto clef. The third line of the staff then becomes middle C. Once you can locate the third line as middle C, we can derive the name of the other spaces and lines as follows. The third space becomes D, the fourth line E, the fourth space F, and the fifth line G. Going downwards from C now, the second space will be B, the second line is A, the first space will be G, and the first line is F. When the names of the lines and spaces are separated, you have F, A, C, E, G as the lines, and G, B, D, F as the spaces. You may not need to memorize the names of the lines and spaces as you can easily derive it by having the third line as C. And in any case, the clef is used only by a specified number of instruments. Letter lines and spaces may also be used with the C clef in the same way as it is used for the treble and bass clefs. Recall that the 
fifth line of the autoclave is G. That will make the space above the autoclave to be A. The first ledger line will be B. Space above the first ledger line will be C. The second ledger line will be D. Space above the second ledger line is E. Third ledger line is F. Space above the third ledger line is G. And the fourth ledger line is A. Coming down now, we also know that the first line of the autoclef is F. So the space below the clef will be E. The first ledger line below the staff will be D. The space below the first ledger line will be C. Second ledger line is B. Space below the second ledger line is A. The third ledger line is G. The space below the third ledger line is F. And the fourth ledger line is E. Only one orchestral instrument, the viola, which is a member of the string family, uses the alto clef. In the piece of music shown, violin plays on the first staff with the treble clef on the staff. Viola is next on the second staff, but you can see that it's the alto clef that is there now. Cello plays with the bass and contrabass plays with the bass staff. While the piano plays on the great staff with the treble clef and the bass clef combined. The tenor clef. When the C clef is placed on the fourth line of the staff, it becomes the tenor clef and the fourth line becomes middle C. Other lines can then be derived as follows. Fourth line is C, so the fourth space will be D, and the fifth line will be E. Going down backwards, the third space will then be B, the third line will be A, and since we have exhausted our seven alphabets, now we we'll go back to G as the second space, F as the second line, E as the first space, and D as the first line. When the names of the lines and spaces are separated, it becomes D, F, A, C, E, and the spaces will be E, G, B, D. Ledger lines can also be derived for the tenor clef. Recall that the fifth line is E, so the space above the fifth line will be F, the first ledger line will be G, space above the first ledger line will be A, second ledger line is B, the space above the second ledger line is C, the third ledger line is D, the space above the third ledger line is E, and the fourth ledger line is F. Going to the ledger lines below the staff, D is the first line of the staff. So the space below the staff will become C. The first ledger line will be B. The space below the first ledger line will be A. The second ledger line is G. The space below the second ledger line is F. Third ledger line is E. The space below the third ledger line is D. And the fourth ledger line is C. The tenor clef is occasionally used by the cello and double bass, which are members of the string family, the basson, which is a member of the woodwind family, and the trombone, which is a member of the brass family. Observe in the music shown as the basson piece shifts from bass clef to tenor clef because the notes got really high and he had to put it an octave lower and then shifts again to bass when the notes are lower and then shifts again to tenor when the notes went up again. This is done because 
the notes written after the tenor clef will have been too high. There will have been too many ledger lines if the clef sign was not changed. That's the example of a basson use of the tenor clef. Music written for oratorios and similar music often have the four parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, written on different staves because of their complexities. An example is shown above with the piece Christmas Oratorio Part 2 by Johann Sebastian Bach. Glory to God in the highest. You will observe that the soprano takes the first staff, the alto takes the next one, the tenor takes the third staff, and you can see there that is the treble clef that is on the staff, and the basses take the fourth staff. The last two staves are for the piano part. An oratorio is a large musical composition for orchestra, choir, and soloist. And it is usually a narrative of some sort. An example is the Messiah by George Frederick Handel, which tells the story of the birth, life, and death of Jesus. Usually, in these types of music, the tenor part is put on a staff that looks like the treble staff. Because if they are placed on the bass staff, there will be too many ledger lines to contend with. Since the male tenor voice sounds an octave lower than the treble voice, a special clef sign is used on the staff to indicate that the sound is intended to be an octave lower. That is, that it is not the treble staff per se. That clef is known as the transposing G clef because it transposes the music to a lower register. So even though the music is put on a staff similar to the treble staff, that clef sign will indicate that it is not the treble staff, but the staff meant to be used by the tenors. The transposing G clef may be written in three ways. The first method is a treble clef with eight under it. That eight indicates an octave lower type of clef. The second method is to put a double G clef on the staff as shown. And the third method is a C clef placed on the third space of the staff. You can see that this is different now from the type we know. It's not on the line. It's not on the third line. It's not on the fourth line. Those ones will be alto clef and tenor clef. But this time, it's placed on the space, the third space. And it indicates that that third space is C. With these three types, the third space of the staff is the middle C, even though it looks like the C on the treble staff. So it's actually the C that is an octave lower than the C on the treble staff. An example is shown of the transposing G clef in the tenor part of Hallelujah Chorus by G.F. Handel. Observe the octave sign in the form of eight below the treble clef. Songs written for male choir are also sometimes written on this clef. An example is shown with an old form of movable clef placed on the third space of the staff, making the space the middle C. In this lesson, we have learned about the five types of movable clef and the most commonly used ones, which are the alto clef and the tenor clef, as well as the transposing clefs that is used by men. Next lesson, we are going to take a break from representation of pitch of, of uh, sounds to move a little bit into 
representation of duration. That's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red button below the video in case you have not done so, so that you can continue to get updates of new videos as they come out. And also, if you have enjoyed this lesson, please click like. Until next time, God bless you.